What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a big one. It's going to be split into maybe two parts, maybe three. It all depends how long this will go on for. But yeah, I finally wanted to talk about my favourite films of all time. <clears throat> um, I originally started this as a, kind of started writing this down as a uh, as a top 10 for this video. But it, it got to the point where it became a top 20. <laughs> and it became a, a top 25. So that's where we're at. This is going to be my top 25 films of all time. <laughs> it became a top 10. They're top 20. But now it's a top 25. Oh my god! We are going to kick this off uh, with obviously number 25. I'm going from the bottom to the top, 25 to 1. Let's get into this. Number 25. It's going to be Suspiria from 2018, uh, the 2018 remake of the um, Argento 1977 original. Uh, you know, by, by definition, this is a remake, but it couldn't be more of a different film than the original if it, if, if it tried. You know, it's, it's such a different movie. It is more of a taking what the original did and kind of reimagining it in... In a different way, it's, you know, it's got the same kind of premise, the same kind of ideas, but it's presented in a completely different way to the original. Um, and and to, to to some some people's uh, surprise, I actually prefer this over the original. I know, kill me in the comments, whatever. But yeah, I I, I fucking love this film. Um, I only saw this uh, this year actually. It's so well made, you know. Uh, I think. Dakota Johnson in this, she's stunning in this, she's fantastic, it's a great job. Uh, Tilda Swinton is an incredible actress and she she absolutely smashes it in the role here as well. Uh, it's just a it's just a very, very kind of just unsettling film and it's got this tone throughout where you just you know something's something bad is gonna is brewing and is gonna unleash itself. Um, it's a very slow burn film, so if you're into those slower movies that kind of like you you are slowly like making your way through the horror that is going to unleash towards the end of this film. Uh, the, yeah, the climax is absolutely insanity in this movie. I did not see this coming at all. It was just it was uh, it was so ridiculous that I think it's one of my favourite climaxes of a film ever. It just throws everything at you. And it absolutely just blew my mind a little bit. It's just so well, so well conceived, and so well um, realised. I think, and it's definitely a film where every piece of dialogue is important. So you have to really like pay attention to what characters are saying because the dialogue is so so important to kind of like piece the, together what is really going on at this dance school. And it's really really cool. Yeah, number twenty five. Suspiria 2018. I absolutely love this movie. Number 24 is Predator from 1987. Uh, yeah, one of those movies that transcends its star. It definitely transcends Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, in this film. You know, I'm a big creature monster fan, so you know, the, the Predator is one of the all time greats in terms of space alien kind of creature designs. Uh, Stan Winston absolutely absolutely killed it when it comes to designing the predator uh, if you've seen like some of the behind the scenes footage of what the predator was going to look like it could have been a complete disaster so the, the way that the fact that they redesigned the actual alien in, in this film is just so so integral to the film's success i think they, when, I, when i say the film transcends old source i mean he's in it and he's pretty decent but I never really use these. I don't see this film as a Schwarzenegger vehicle. It's more of a standalone sci-fi action movie that basically excels in all of those things. It, it's just a great science fiction mystery. You know, this alien who's hunting these militia down, and you've got obviously the action side, which is completely explosive and macho. It's probably the greatest macho man movie ever made. Um, but yeah, Predator number twenty-four is excellent. When you want an action film you know there's there's usually two or three that i pick 
and Predator's in the, in in that in that three that I usually pick for you know a great action film. Twenty three is Batman, nineteen eighty nine. Tim Burton's Batman. I have so much, so much nostalgic ties to this film. Uh, I think Michael Keaton is great as Batman. He's okay as Bruce Wayne, but he plays Batman really well in this. Jack Nicholson is, to, in my opinion, the quintessential Joker. Um, I think his, his Joker portrayal is just comes straight from the comic book, straight from the page onto the screen. I think he's excellent as a Joker. Some people would argue that Heath Ledger has uh, portrayed the Joker in, in the best possible way, but I think Jack Nicholson is absolutely outstanding as the Joker in this film. Um, yeah, I think the uh, it's got my favourite bat suit. I think the Batman suit just looks just iconic. It's just fantastic. You know, it, it has so many things in this film that are just so well done. I think, like, the Batmobile is my favourite Batmobile. I think it looks the coolest. The theme is absolutely brilliant. One of the greatest superhero themes ever made, in my opinion. Just so, just so, as soon as you hear it, it's just like, that's Batman to me. It's so good. This film is outstanding and it's still my favorite batman film ever something about batman 89 that just really draws me in every time and i think it is just one of the one, one of my favorite superhero films ever number 22 is gremlins uh, one of my favorite christmas films ever like uh it's a christmas film because it just opens with christmas music it's about christmas there's conversations about christmas it just happens to be a monster movie on Christmas, and I love that about this movie. I think it's exceptionally well made. Um, you know, it's just uh, Joe Dante made has made it's just made it's a great movie. Like the, the visuals, the practical effects, the music choices, everything about this movie is exceptional. Gizmo, one of the cutest little little monsters in cinema history, and you know the Gremlins are just. You know, just crazy, out for anarchy, and out for really to have fun. And that's what I love about this film is that they're not inherently evil. They just want to have a good time, and their good time just happens to be let's destroy everything and completely just piss people off and scare the fuck out of people and kill old ladies on electrical stair lifts <laughs> and stuff like that. But yeah, this film is fantastic. It is just aged so well. It's super watchable every every time. And it's uh, it is a Christmas staple for me every year. So yeah, Gremlins is my number 22. Number 21 is one of the greatest, uh, you know, Japanese animated films ever. Um, is Akira. Akira, man. Like I remember getting into anime in in the uh, in the in the mid 90s. You know, growing up, in, you know, young teenager, you know, 10, you know, nine, 10 years old. Of getting into anime and getting not really getting into anime per se but like discovering animation from japan and like getting into like things like pokemon and dragon ball z and stuff like that um and then discovering stuff like street fighter the movie and then discovering more adult stuff like akira on video and absolutely being blown away uh by it. Just, just just the storytelling and the visuals that this film kind of gives us it's just so it's such a well uh, realized film in terms of animation and visual storytelling it's incredible and i think it's like it's the cornerstone of um of some of the, the some of the reasons why anime became just massive in in the west uh, akira is contributes to that massively i think if there was no akira there would be no matrix there would be no cyberpunk this was a big influence for japanese animation uh, for, for uk and american audiences and without it i don't think anime would be as big as it is now uh, over here in western territories it is super super quick quintessential and if you're into anime and you haven't seen this what the fuck are you actually doing because this is where it really kind of made anime a force to be reckoned with it's one of the greatest japanese animated films ever made and everyone should check it out at least once because it is just a masterpiece my number 20 is a film i saw maybe about eight years ago 2012 2013 uh and it is for me it's like the greatest uh revenge film ever made uh it might be the best the best serial killer film ever made it's just it is so exceptional in everything it does that you just are engrossed by it in every fucking manner it is so good uh, the, it tells a story of a serial killer he kills this uh this cop's 
or detective's uh, girlfriend and this this ex ex detective cop guy decides to make the serial killer's life a living hell and it is it it starts to really kind of you know it starts to really kind of pull on your moral fabric because you really don't know whether this this guy going out for revenge to kill to basically just to torment this serial killer is the right thing to do morally i mean you kind of do root for him because he's he, the, the, the guy killed his wife so you're you're kind of rooting for him but it also kind of like you have a little moral thing in your mind you know should i be rooting for this for this ex-cop who's basically hunting this guy down at every moment he can get and just make his life a misery it blurs the line between protagonist and antagonist as well it's it's a very very thoughtful film just because this guy is evil doesn't mean people around him are not so like say his family for example are good people he just happens to be an utter scumbag it has these moral questions that it gives you but it's just it's so intense and so visceral and so absolutely on the nose brutal that you will be captivated from the word go it is so vis visually and viscerally intense that you won't have time to catch your breath in this film it is so well made it is my favorite revenge film of all time and that's why it's in my top 20 of all time uh, how far would you go to get revenge number 19 on my list is one of my favorite animated films um ever which is a uh, big hero 6 i remember going to see this in the cinema when it came out in 2014 and it was kind of just like a blind watch i think i was going on a date with 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 a girl at the time and it was just like should we go and see that and we're like yeah let's just go and see that we you know i didn't even know anything about this film and it's just one of these films where i i just laugh out loud every time it's so good it's so funny baymax is like one of the most lovable characters in in all of like animated disney films you know it's one of my favorite, he's one of my favorite characters this this film happens to be just entertaining incredibly funny wonderfully light-hearted i think everyone should watch it it is fucking brilliant and um it you know it, it kind of made me be a kid again it's it's so it's so good and uh it still makes me laugh to this day and uh i think everyone should watch it i get i get japanese anime vibes from it it has this kind of, kind of vibe to it as well that really kind of really kind of uh speaks to me it's just such a you know a, a lovable movie that i think everyone should watch if you're into the disney pixar or disney animated films this is one of their best in my opinion it's, it's in there it's in up there big time uh, well it's my favorite disney animated film so it is incredible i highly recommend everyone to watch it number 18 is uh the raid uh what can i say to this film it's uh it's one of my favorite action films ever it's one of my favorites of all time um the choreography uh is just stunning the the actual like physical violence that is basically displayed in this film is bone breakingly wince inducing fucking brutal and it's just so exhilarating and the the, the whole the whole concept as well where it's just like yeah there's this whole drug ring in this high-rise building they're sending the SWAT team to sort it out and it is like kind of like it's kung fu just brutal just violent action film that I think everyone could get something out of it is just so pound for pound in your face every sequence is exhilarating and I just love everything about this film there's a whole scene in a, in a corridor that is the most some of the most brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences I've ever witnessed in the movie and I think if you're into your foreign uh, action films from say like Korea uh, and Japan and stuff like that this is an absolute absolute banger it's from it's, a, it's an Indonesian uh, film and it is absolutely smashing I really regret not seeing this film in the cinema when it came out in 2011 I because at the time I was like well, it's got subtitles I don't care but it's just like, man, do I regret not seeing this on the big screen? What a movie. Don't really rate the sequel that much, but the raid, the first raid film is absolutely exceptional. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's one of the greatest action films ever made, in my opinion. And that's why it's on my number 18. Number 17 is also another foreign film. 
from Japan came out in 2000, Battle Royale, a film that is like just kind of created a whole new wave of uh, of pop culture relevance. A film that has inspired so much in terms of just dystopia, kind of brutal, violent Japanese films, and also just pop culture in general. I mean, you've got a whole video game genre that is basically based on what this film gave us, Battle Royale. Uh, you've got the Hunger Game movies that are heavily inspired by this film. This film is an incredible, incredible deep dive into, you know, could you literally kill your best friend to survive? It is woefully bleak, woefully dystopian, but it's so the story is so engaging and the concept is so fresh at the time. It, and the film is so well made that you will come back to this time and time again. And it's just... It is just so, so scary in its idea that the government has had enough of the youth. It has enough of the unruly youth and it's created the BR Act. The BR Act is something where basically they choose a class from the high school and they send that one class to an island and go, right, you've all got to kill each other and one person can survive. That is horrible. That is horrific. But this film is so well made that... I think that whole concept kind of takes a backseat and people are more invested in the characters. The great characters in this as well, fantastic characters. But yeah, the whole concept of this film is quite scary if it ever did happen in real life. It is a horrific idea, but this film portrays it in such a way that it just it makes an entertaining ride from start to finish. Mate, this this film kind of for me was amongst amongst this uh, a group of Asian films uh, for me growing up that were just hyper violent with super high concept films that really made an impact on me and made me an even bigger film fan than I am, you know, than I was, do you know what I mean? So Battle Royale is a massive, massive film that I think people kind of forget about in some way and films like Hunger Games would not exist without Battle Royale in my opinion the Hunger Games books I don't think would exist either um, but yeah Battle Royale is excellent that's why it makes my number 17 number 16 on my list is 1973's Enter the Dragon one of the greatest kung fu films ever made uh, the film that thrust um, you know Chinese kung fu movies into the mainstream in the West for Western audiences. A film that has a heartbreaking backstory where Bruce Lee died two weeks before the film was premiered in America and he never got to see the final movie. But for me, this is his quintessential release. Uh, probably the greatest martial artist to ever live. And this film has everything for me. It has, you know, it has interesting characters. It has a great, James Bond-esque kind of uh, story to it and it also has some of the greatest chore choreographed fights in any movie to date in my opinion uh, you know Bruce Lee with the nunchucks says it all in my opinion the, the guy was you know the guy was a living legend at the time and he, he, he will be immortalized as probably the greatest martial art actor of all time I know there's been arguments with you know Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan but Bruce Lee every day, all day, and I just think this is the you know this is one of the this is the greatest kung fu film ever made. Uh, it's just everything about it is just impeccable. The soundtrack is incredible. Every time I hear that soundtrack, I'm like I have to watch this film now because the soundtrack is so iconic to me and so nostalgic to me that I just love this film. This film uh, just cemented my love for Bruce Lee and kung fu films when I was younger. And uh, I went through a bit of an obsessive, obsessive uh, phase where Bruce Lee was my favourite thing ever. And I had all those films on VHS and uh, I'm really happy to have a box set with all his films. And uh, yeah, Enter the Dragon is still the king of them, in my opinion. And I think if you've not seen Enter the Dragon and you've got, you've got some interest in martial, art, martial arts action films, this is probably the greatest of them all and I think everyone should check it out. So yeah. That's why it's my number 16. Number 15 is Back to the Future. Yeah, uh, just, just such an easy film to watch, I think. 
I think it might just be one of the one of the one of the best adventure films ever made. It's such a simple concept um, and such a heartwarming and just just such a great movie to watch, man. Like I love the characters. You know, Mike McFly is one of the one of my favorite characters ever. Doc Brown is one of the one of the greatest. Like you know, Christopher Lloyd's probably his greatest character in my opinion. And you know, I, I like to think that this made this made everyone fall in love with DeLoreans everywhere. Um, what you know, what a cool what a cool car to build a time machine out of. I know DeLoreans kind of flopped when they came out, and then no one liked them, or no one bought them. But like this film kind of immortalized DeLoreans as as um, you know a car in pop culture, and mate, this film is just. Except it's, it's excellent. It's it's one of the great you know it's part of one of the greatest trilogies trilogies of all time. I, re I recently watched them back to back, and it was just like it's just like one giant movie. It was how how they were meant to be seen, and you know I think that the first film is just is just an all time classic, and it will always be that. And I just think it's just such an easy film to watch. If it's on TV and it's halfway through, I can just sit and watch it. It's incredible. And um, yeah, it's just fantastic. I think it's one of the greatest adventure films ever made. So yeah, Back to the Future is fucking awesome. Number 13 is Die Hard. Uh, it's, it's one of the greatest straight up action films ever made, right? There's been debates whether it's a Christmas movie. In my mind, it is because it's always on at Christmas for one. Uh, it opens with basically Christmas music in some regard and it also kind of just they reference Christmas throughout it it's it's you know it, it closes with Christmas music so what makes a Christmas movie is different for people but for me the fact that it's set on Christmas or set on Christmas Eve has Christmas mentioned throughout and closes with Christmas music for me it's a Christmas movie and it happens to be the greatest action film ever made as well so yeah Die Hard I can't really say much about Die Hard that hasn't really been said but yeah just fucking excellent some of the greatest greatest sec sequences in action film history him diving wrapping the uh, the water hose around him to jump off the roof as it explodes the whole shoot the glass sequence and then you see him in the butt in the in the restroom putting the glass out of his out of his feet uh, you know Hans Gruber being one of the greatest action film villains ever uh, probably my favorite Anna Rickman role for sure uh, you know, Bruce Willis playing this kind of like, uh, you know, this this you know New York cop who comes to see his uh, ex, you know his kind of like estranged wife, and uh, it's just this relatable guy John McClane, and he happens to be this one man wrecking crew and just you know basically toiling with these terrorists. It's just such a simple concept uh, that's been ex executed ex extremely well. It still holds up today. I love it. I put it on and I can watch the whole thing. No problem. It could be on TV. No doubt. It will be on TV at Christmas. And I could watch it then. It is incredibly rewatchable, And it holds up. I, you know, it's from the 80s. But like. You know. It, it could have. You know. You could, this could have come out yesterday. And still feel just as relevant. It is excellent. And yeah. It's probably my favourite Bruce Willis film. It's, it's fucking. Fucking great. Number 13 is Evil Dead, the 2013 remake. Oh, what can I say you'll haven't said before this movie? Like, one of my... Probably the greatest remake, horror remake ever, is, is the measuring stick for me. But since it came out, I just feel like it's probably my... Yeah, it's, it's my favourite Evil Dead movie. Some people might go mental at me. But it, that's the way I feel. Like, if I want to watch an Evil Dead film, this is the film I'm going to pick out. Because I love it. I think it's such a faithful film that you know that you can clear it was made by people that love the original movies, and they wanted to go go by that kind of creed. And the practical effects are absolutely stunning. Um, you know, you're covered in blood by the end. Some of the so, some of the sequences, the violent sequences in this are just fucking brutal. The kids in this film get absolutely brutalized, and it's just heart pounding a heart pounding movie from start to finish and i love every second of it uh like i said it's the greatest remake ever made 
um, in terms of modern remakes, because obviously we know there's other films that are also remakes that are classics. But when it comes to modern horror remakes, uh, this is this is the measuring stick going forward. It's excellent, and that's why it's in my top 20. Number 12 is Jurassic Park. A film where I would argue is, and you know, I mentioned uh, Back to the Future being one of the greatest adventure films ever. Uh, Jurassic Park is the greatest adventure film ever made, uh, in my opinion. It's just exceptional. Um, as a kid growing up uh, and watching this for the first time and going through dinosaur fever, it really ignited my imagination as a child. And I, I love this film. Um, it has some little kind of mistakes in it. Everyone's pointing out all the little kind of errors. Uh, in the plot, but I just think some of the you know a lot of the sequences are shot and framed and, and delivered so masterfully. The T Rex escape uh, scene is one of the greatest sequences ever put to film, in my opinion. Uh, the the practical effects, the combination of practical effects and CGI, I just it's just it holds up, man. It holds up to this day. It holds up even better than the newer Jurassic Park films, which is saying something. It changed cinema forever in that in that regard, um, but it still is just a, such a rewatchable uh, film that I will forever love. And the soundtrack is one of the greatest John Williams soundtrack track, tracks ever. It just gives you that just wonder and magical kind. Of, it's just a magical movie in general. Sure, it's a disaster film where a theme park basically goes wrong and starts eating the tourists, as they say. But it's just such a wondrous film where it fills you with this wonder before it just tears that all down and makes you realise, oh shit, there's a T-Rex, we have a T-Rex. Yeah, Jurassic Park, in my opinion, the greatest adventure film ever made, it is excellent and that's why it's on this list. Number 11, this had to be in the list somewhere, it had to because I love this franchise. Critters from 1986. Man, man, I, you know, I can, I can put this film on now and just enjoy myself. It's such a simple movie. They, they made it so watchable and so entertaining. It's kind of got horror elements and comedy elements in there, and it's just, it's just a great movie. I think it's so well made. Uh, it's a cheap movie. You can tell it's on a, on a, on a budget, but it's just one of those just low budget 80s films that just happened to just, just to spark my imagination uh, and just I just fall in love with the little critterunus they are just scary as fuck and adorable at the same time I can't describe how I can think that way but I just do it is it all it is but yeah critters such a such a great film from the 80s and uh the soundtrack is undoubtedly 80s with um a song made for the film called uh, Power of the Night. Power of the Night. The streets are calling. Power of the Night. So, it's so 80s. And, and you will hear that song throughout the whole movie because they play it like over and over again. But it's part of the charm for this film. You've got Dee Wallace, who, in my opinion, is probably the highlight of the film, actor-wise. Uh, she, she puts on an immense performance. When she's scared in this film, you really feel it, she's great in this movie, and when she's pissed off, you can tell she's pissed off. Um, yeah, I love this film, I think it's just, it's, it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna spend, you know, the rest of my life re-watching this film, you know, years to come, for sure, and uh, I think it's forgotten, some people would say it's forgotten for a reason, because I don't really know many people that know about this franchise, um, and some people would say it's forgotten for a reason, but perhaps this first movie is, I'm fairly forgotten because I think this film is a very very good creature feature it's a great science fiction movie and uh, it's a great kind of like about you know about this family like you know it's, it's just it's just not all round they're just a good good movie that I think lots of people could enjoy you know check it out man if you're into like monster movies or little monster movies I mean if you are into that and you haven't seen this like, what are you doing with your life but also um, yeah, if you've not seen Critters, I highly recommend Critters. Um, I, I, I'll leave it up to you whether you want to see the sequels or not, but the first film, for me, is just a must-watch. I think this is it's great. I love it. It's, it's a film I put on time and time again. I never get bored of it. 
and I think everyone can enjoy something about it. So yeah, Critters is my number 11. Blue and red, blue and red, blue.